I want to run and crawl in a hole. COVID anxiety. They stay that way all the time. I'm gonna get back up underneath there and get these hooked. <clears throat> Since I've lost all that weight, I've lost my blanket. I'm no longer have my Well, today I'm at the cardiologist. Last week I was at the cardiologist because my heart has not been nice. In the ER the week before, my EKG was bad. With my QTC being prolonged over a full point for my baseline. So I had to get another EKG outpatient when I came to the cardiology appointment. When I came to the cardiology appointment earlier, my QTC had normalized then, but my T waves were flattened, which is something that can happen in electrolyte imbalances if you're on the verge of a heart attack and what have you. So they're putting on a one to two week monitor and then once those results come back in i'm going to go see my ep but they couldn't do it during my last appointment because they had to wait for the monitor for it to come in but i just got a notification on my fancy dancy phone that says that my halter it's not a halter monitor i don't know exactly what it is but it's complete. They actually use a cell phone for this to connect with the sensor and the monitor. Except all it'll allow you to do is record an event and to send in a test ECG. But it's time for me to remove this so this pops right out. It's from Biotel Heart. And then I'm gonna take this one. Where's that Teddy Ram? Finally, these suckers are itchy. What are you doing? Yeah, they're itchy. I literally just woke up. So, there's that. But I'm gonna go take a shower to wash all that gunk off. What was I gonna say? But they're not going to have those the results for that monitor until three weeks it's that's how long it's going to take them because first it goes back to the company where they read it and then they send it over to the doctor i wish that thing could measure blood pressure because my blood pressures have just been awful unfortunately or fortunately i guess it depends on how you look at it my old endocrinologist retired so good for him <laughs> And we just got pawned off to someone else in practice. So I have no clue who the new doctor is. I had originally had this virtual, but there's stuff we need to accomplish yeah, in person. The and then we had to cancel the first appointment because I was inpatient. And aside from this week, I haven't had an in-person appointment in a long time. And I'm already not, I wanna run and crawl in a hole but to check out woman sneezing without her mask on. And she's so congested. Mm -hmm. Doesn't that make you want to run crawling a hole? Yeah, it didn't make me feel good, that's for sure. Yeah. COVID anxiety. I guess that's a new thing now. I just got back home from my endocrinology appointment. I liked her much better than I liked my previous endocrinologist, which is great. 
this was a new patient appointment, so it was kind of lengthy, but we mainly discussed my low blood pressures and whether or not they are related to adrenal insufficiency because I am weaning steroids or if it's a, another problem. Um, my blood pressures, especially this week, have been exceptionally awful, like 70s over 40s, 80s over 30s. The question is, is whether my adrenal glands have decided to wake up or not because your adrenal glands produce stress hormones like cortisol. But when you've been on steroids as long as I have, starting from 2015, then your adrenal gland forgets how to produce that cortisol and the other stress hormones on their own. So the point when you've been steroid dependent, as long as I have, you need to go extremely slow. So I've been weaning half a milligram every couple of weeks and I've been at my current dose for like two months now. So my previous endocrinologist is regarding my cellular cord test wanted me at 30 milligrams, which is supposedly like a starting point for the maintenance dose of an adult. He didn't expect that I would get below that because I have been on chronic steroids as long as I have. But, 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 but. My oncologist, however, was encouraging me to attempt to get down as low as I could go. And in my opinion, because I still had such a moon face at the 30 milligram total daily mark, to me, that is an indication that, hey, your body is getting too much cortisol. Now I'm on 11 and a half milligrams total daily of Solucortef, and my new endocrinologist suggested that while the 30 milligrams, he wasn't necessarily wrong in telling me that the 30 milligrams was where I would be, that's simply a starting point of an adult's maintenance dose and that depending on your individual needs and requirements, it could potentially go be much lower than that. Her plan to see if the low blood pressures are related to adrenal problems is that I am, my dose right now is currently seven milligrams in the morning, two and a half milligrams in the afternoon, and then two milligrams in the evening. When I didn't have it split up three times a day, I was noticing I was starting to have crisis symptoms prior to my evening dose and I was just a mess once I got around the 30 milligram mark. So I split the dose up and I've been weaning that way and I've been much more successful. But my new endocrinologist, her plan is to hold my evening dose overnight and then in the morning have an 8 a.m. cortisol check. And if my body is showing that it's producing something, that's a good indication that, hey, maybe you can start weaning a little bit more and the low blood pressures, of course, wouldn't be from adrenal problems. Then if my body is starting to produce enough without me giving it the extra. Or if I'm at zero and my adrenal glands have not produced anything overnight for that 8 a.m. dose, then you know, hey, we need to take a step back and try to figure out a new dose. One of the easier ways to do it would just be to do increase my dose back and see what happens. But of course I'm going to feel better because steroids do treat a lot of my various conditions. So, the yes, also, you can also do a stem test, which is where they'll inject you with like a synthetic agent that tells your body what to produce. Um, but of course, we don't want to inject anything in me that's not already natural due to my mast cell component. And then also another wonderful thing that happened, that's well, great, I just dropped it. Another wonderful thing that's happened is my home health company. God bless their soul. God bless them. My original pharmacist who took care of the TPN patients, he left a few months ago. And I understood that because they had a change in authority and that sort of thing, and other people were trying to take over his job, that there was gonna be some growing pains, you know, even though he promised everything would be hunky-dory. Well, we've had growing pains, let's just say, every week for the last three months since he left. And so that's frustrating. But because there are so many changes occurring within the company, 
they got a new TPN compounder machine that isn't compatible. That is not compatible with my TPN bags. And there are different plasticizers and components in a TPN bag or any IV bag. And when you are very sensitive with a mast cell disorder, sometimes you react to those. I am infamous for reacting to various bags. It took us forever to figure that out. I actually didn't figure it out. It was the doctor who figured it out. And as soon as we switched to Braun products, I got a lot better. My bag reactions, they kind of build up. It's not something where I'm going to immediately hook up and have anaphylaxis. First of all, all my IV bags, they have to be DEHP free, PVC free, and latex free. And sometimes I'll react to bags even if the bag explicitly states that it's free of those things. But I just keep reacting. To make a long story short, a pharmacist did explain to me why. Depending on the bag, there's different cleaning agents using the sterilization process. So that's why I can do one bag. Like, for example, you just use B brawn fluids. You've got the L8000 fluids and the E8000 fluids. I do the E8000 fluids, but most people seem to tolerate the L8000s. But for me, well, I'm weird. But <laughs> anyways, L8000 is in a softer, more pliable plastic, whereas the E8000 is in a rigid container and I tolerate the rigid one and not the light one, but it's even though they're coming from the same company, they use different sterilization methods for the different product. I just hooked up to the new TVN bag. So far there's been nothing drastic that's occurred because of the new TVN bag. This one anyways, I've had some bladder issues, but the nothing that I can pinpoint and say it's directly related to that. I just thought I would bring it up in case it could be helpful for anybody else. I thought it was crazy to be able to react to a bag. I didn't believe it even when the doctor told me. But this was years ago when we first realized my sensitivity to certain things in IV bags because it leaches into whatever's inside, whether it be the saline or the medication, the TPN. I was doing bad. I kept dropping weight. I got down to 81 pounds despite doing all of my feeds because I was also on feeds at this time. And I could hardly even walk. Every time I would stand up, my muscles would just like shake and my pots was just out of control. It was, I was in so much pain constantly with the bone pain, the mast cell bone pain. But the doctor had me make a list on what changed. And at the time, I had recently switched home health companies. My first home health company used all B-Braun products. And when I switched, all of my supplies changed to Baxter. And that is when we realized that was a change. And so they switched me back to Braun products. And, and then I started getting weight back. I was able to walk again. I stopped swelling up and such as much randomly. It was just night and day difference and I couldn't believe it. So I'm only bringing this up in case someone else, if you're in a mass cell flare and you can't pinpoint why, make your what change list and find that trigger because removing it can literally change your life. Like for me, I do better with B-Brown products, but yours may be some other brand. I feel like a lot has happened this week, but everything's been hurry up and wait. So hopefully within the next two weeks, I will get some answers in regards to whether my adrenal glands are producing cortisol and some heart monitor results.